Hello everybody and welcome to this throwback review on the Transformers Dark the Moon Commander Class Hatchet. As always, if there is a specific character or figure that you would like me to take a look at in the next episode, please feel free to let me know down in the comment section below and I would really appreciate it if you guys could all smash the like button, hit the subscribe button and of course click that notification bell. I chose to take a look here at Commander Class Hatchet in today's video as in my opinion Hatchet is actually one of the hidden gems from the DOTM toy line despite him being one of the smaller scaled and cheaper priced Transformers figures out of that line. I believe he has turned out exceptionally well and up until this point we haven't as of yet gotten an updated version of Hatchet although to me personally I've actually always been incredibly happy with this particular command class figure despite him not being of the deluxe class scale and of course having an incredibly inaccurate alternate mode I believe that his robot mode looks absolutely fantastic and for display purposes I have no issues with actually posing him alongside Berserker and Crankcase. So taking a closer look here at Hatchet in his his jet mode. Of course, in the movie, the dreads were, I believe, Chevy Suburbans, so this is a major departure from what we actually saw on screen. Personally, I really do like what Hasbro did do with this character. They have given him an incredibly intimidating and rather aggressive looking fighter jet, and for those of you who have seen the portrayal of the dreads from the Transformers 3 movie, you guys know that fits the persona of this character perfectly. As far as the sculpt and paintwork is concerned, I believe it has turned out exceptionally well. The overall design of the jet looks fantastic. Of course, there are some subtle bursts of gold scattered throughout the figure in order to break up and pick out some of the sharper details of the sculpt. As we flip here to the underside, despite him being roughly in the Scout class lineup, I believe they've done a fantastic job in concealing any of the robot mode kibble. Of course, he is not 100% accurate as we do have the hand sticking out here for the back, but considering the price point and considering the scale, it really has turned out super, super nice. We have got a nice gun metal here for the thrusters as well as the iconic Michael Bay Decepticon insignia, which looks a lot more aggressive than the Decepticon insignias that we got in the original G1 series and overall I just think this here looks absolutely fantastic. Of course we do have the bombs or the missiles pegged here onto the sides and these are indeed a separate accessory which you shall have to detach for robot mode. We do actually get landing gear here as well which I think is a really nice touch and the sculpt work on this particular piece too has come out exceptionally well. Overall these commander class figures were just so so awesome and you can definitely expect me to be taking a look at more of these guys on the channel in some of these future throwback reviews. So definitely whilst not 100% accurate to the movie I believe that it looks really, really awesome. As far as transformation is concerned, of course, you just want to flip up the landing gear. We can take the missiles here and just remove them and set them there off to the side. You're then going to want to detach the hands here from the back. So just untab this section, bring this down and snap that into place. Of course, come here to this side and repeat the same process. I believe we can just leave these there out to the side. You'll then want to turn your attention to this section, extend it forwards as it is held on via this pin which does shift up and down for conversion. We can then take this section, disengage that, take the legs and split these and I really love how these two halves do actually fit over the top here of the cockpit. Great engineering for such a small figure in my opinion and then of course we can extend all of these joints here in order to create the almost dog leg look that we saw from the movie. So just repeat the same process here, extend the tail and I think the spinal detailing looks awesome on this, however we'll get more into that later on in the review. You're going to want to split this section, we can then pop the head sculpt forwards. I believe you were then supposed to collapse this in, take this here, collapse the arms in, bring these sections down and around, and of course repeat the same process here on the opposite side. And then it was just a matter of shifting the crutch plate forwards, manipulating the legs so that they resemble his look from the movie. Of course, straighten out the tail. We can then bring in the missile pods and these two do actually transform. So they will flip up to reveal some very nice looking mechanical detail. And of course, repeat the same process here on the opposite side and these do simply peg here on to the back of the wings and of course repeat the same process here on this side and here we have the DOTM commander class hatchet fully transformed up into his robot mode and I've got to be honest and state that this figure here even put some of the studio series deluxe figures to shame the sculpt and the paintwork for such a small figure and considering the price point I believe these were priced at something like seven dollars I believe is remarkable the old DOTM figures as well as the ROTF figures were fantastic and hatchet is certainly a prime example of that I really don't believe there is a need for an updated version of hatchet than for 
besides the lack of a movie accurate alternate mode for this character, I believe the robot mode looks pretty much spot on to how he appeared in the movie. You can see that as far as that head sculpt is concerned, it just looks awesome. I love the attention to details such as the nose ring, the very aggressive look that he does have on his face, as well as the tremendous paintwork. You can see how we've got a mix of gold metallic paint as well as of course red there for the eyes and some darker grey highlights in order to once again break up the sculpt. I also believe the arms have been sculpted and painted exceptionally well and then as we take a look here towards the back legs whilst these here are a little clunky when in comparison to the front set I still do believe these do the trick and then of course we've got some nice detailing here for the tail and then finally the spike section here on the end. As we turn our attention to the underside you can once again see some fantastic torso detailing which just looks fantastic honestly this guy is so so awesome and I personally absolutely love him. He is by far one of my favourite Commander class figures to come out of this line and for any of you who did actually miss out on this figure when it was originally released I would highly recommend to track him down. As far as articulation is concerned we do get a hinge joint here at the arm which can hinge forwards and backwards as well as a ball joint which can hinge out to the sides as well as rotate the full 360. We do indeed get an elbow bend there as well as a hinge joint here at the hand in order for you to get him into some of those running almost crawling poses that we saw in the movie. Hatchet was definitely more dog like than any of the other dreads in the film and then as we take a look here towards the back these legs are on ball joints as well as have a hinge joint and then finally a hinge joint here for the foot and then here for the tail we do get a hinge joint here a hinge joint here and then finally a hinge joint there for the tip of the tail so overall as far as articulation is concerned I believe it is more than adequate for this scale but when it comes to detail and paintwork they certainly did a terrific job you can also see how the blasters do sit here on the sides and I do believe Hatchet did actually have rockets in the movie so this is in fact movie accurate we've got some nice gun metal silver there to pick out some of the sharper details of the sculpt and something which I'm only noticing now is that it is actually an asymmetrical design so this one appears to be more of a machine gun whereas this one definitely does appear to be more of a missile blast so super super cool and of course from here from a bird's eye perspective I love how they actually detailed the interior of the figure something which you would only see looking down upon the figure as this entire section does remain open for robot mode and that is just so so cool definitely a fantastic figure and despite me really loving what Hasbro are doing with the new Kingdom Core class figures this particular commander class from the DOTM line certainly does put any of those core classes to shame. And here for a dread size comparison we have Hatchet compared next to the Last Night Berserker and of course Crowbar or Crankcase from the Transformers Studio Series lineup and despite the scale not being 100% spot on as mentioned earlier on in the review I definitely think this here could work. Hatchet whilst is by no stretch of the imagination in the deluxe line as he was a commander class figure which I believe was a scale upwards from the scout class in the DOTM line it was a long long time ago so my memory is rather vague. I do think that the scale here could potentially work especially for a display such as this. I imagine that if we were ever to get a studio series version it would be much larger and honestly if they just took the robot mode that this figure had and then gave him his Chevy Suburban alternate mode the figure would be pretty much flawless. I really am impressed with the amount of sculpt and paintwork that this original 2011 commander class figure did have. I really hope that you enjoyed this review. If you did please do let me know down in the comment section below. I would love to know your guys thoughts on this figure and whether or not you have him in your collection or if he will be a figure that you'll be trying to track down after this throwback review is finished. I personally regard him as one of the hidden gems as unfortunately he is a figure that not many people tend to talk about especially when the Dark of the Moon toy line does come to mind. I have always found that the commander class and any scale smaller appears to be forgotten by many collectors and to be honest with you I don't necessarily blame you as of course the deluxe Voyager leader and even the ultimate class back then were the big sellers and they were the highly articulated super detailed figures but Hatchet is a prime example that even some of those smaller figures could contend with some of those larger ones. So once again, I thank you all for watching. For those of you who enjoy these throwback reviews, I would love to know down in the comment section below what character or figure would you like me to take a look at in the next episode. Of course, Sentinel Prime is on the horizon as he was one of, if not was, the best character to come out of the DOTM line. So please don't worry, I shall definitely be doing a throwback review on that original leader class. Once again, let me know what you think of the figure and whether or not you own this figure or did you sell him off or will you now be rebuying him after this video I would really really love to know. Thank you all for watching and until my next video I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.